how would you describe uh, C.L. Franklin, who was a famous pastor? He was Aretha Franklin's father. Yeah, right. Yes. I, yeah. Remember, I remember seeing Aretha at the age of eight in her, in her father's church. He had just preached a sermon, The Eagle Stirs the Nest. There's a recording of it, one of his most famous sermons. And I was so moved by it, but he had his young daughter, eight years old, sing a song that she had recorded called Never Grow Old. And uh, I was just amazed, and I watched her all her career, from that eight-year-old little girl to she's still the queen of soul, and to see her grow. But it was definitely a good thing that she came uh, in a church from the church uh, environment because she has helped so many people, and she gives a yearly revival here in the city, encouraging other young talents to perform, and she feeds thousands to it at the time. So she's a, a good worker for uh, the Lord. We're using the phrase, she's the queen of soul. Yes. Uh, well, why is she? Because no one can sing like Aretha. No one. And she sings it from her heart. And she's been singing, like I said, since the year, since when well, I saw her at eight years old, she probably sang much earlier than that. But that was the year of her recording when she became world known. And um, she's held the, the reign, the, the, the reign of uh, being the queen of soul. She is, she's the greatest uh, soul singer I think I've ever heard, uh, bar none. Uh, Mahalia Jackson is not my generation, but she's heavily influenced by Mahalia Jackson. Um, do you know, I mean, you and Motown, you had, you know, this, let me call it a bit of drill thing going on. Do you know, was it the same for Aretha? Did she, was she kind of, you know, drilled into get the position of being a great performing artist? Having only been around Aretha when she was singing, I wouldn't know. Um, but at Motown, the first girls group to be famous and to make world-renowned fame were the Marvelettes. And they were the generation of, of a Motown talent that wasn't trained. They didn't have the advantage of Professor Maxine Powell's tutorship. And um, we were the second girls group to come and to um, make hit records and become famous. The Supremes were already there, but they had songs that weren't hits. Uh, however, when Mrs. Powell would hold her class, she would have Tammy Terrell, uh, Mary, well Mary Wells was gone by the time Mrs. Powell arrived, uh, but she would have a class of the Supremes, uh, Tammy Terrell, um, Kim Weston, and Martha and the Vandellas. And we'd all go through the exercises of walking with books on our head and going up and down stairs and learning to sit on stools and how to properly get up when you've fallen down if it should be a mishap. Uh, things like that are very important when you're a performer. And you must know that you're always being watched. There's always, always a camera on you and you should always be aware of it. You didn't do the book thing on the head, did you? I, yes, I did. Yes, oh, we did. Really? And we walked up and down the stairs in high heel shoes. We got in and out of limousines. That was part of the training. She's very good at what she does. Wow. Yes. That's, that's, uh, okay. Um, let's come back to, to uh, Aretha's father. He's been very active in the civil rights movement, and he was a friend of Martin Luther King, as far as I know. Um, have, you be, have you been involved in the movement? Motown music was a, was a movement. We got on a bus, a broken down trailway, not a Greyhound, but a broken down trailway with no toilet. We toured 94 One Nighters, our first tour, into areas that didn't have facilities for black and white. They had a colored section and a white section. We didn't make a movement, but we were people actually on tour who needed to eat. And we had, we were go, we had gone into restaurants where we were denied food. We refused to go into the, 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 the colored restrooms because they were just so nasty. Nobody cleaned them. and. Um, I remember having a shotgun in my face at one uh, gas station in Montgomery, Alabama, where we stopped just to use the facilities. And uh, when three of the gentlemen go went inside to the uh, to speak to the gentleman who owned the uh, the gas station, they were ordered out of there. And the man came to the bus and ordered none of us to ever get off of that bus. He, the term he used was. Uh, don't another one of you niggers get off of that bus. And I looked into the barrel of a double, I looked into the barrel of a double barrel shotgun for the first time ever in my life. It was just to use the restroom. But we've come through hard times and seen better days. I guess it was something that 
we had to go through because of the sign of the times. But we weren't a movement. We were people trying to go all over the South, perform our music, and uh, return safely home. Uh, our audiences were segregated for a while. Uh, however, Smokey Robinson, who I'll always admire, who is my mentor, because they were the group that had the hit record. He stood on stage, and uh, there was a time when security guards who had our sawed off, they had sawed off bats, baseball bats. They would take the handle and cut it off and hold it, the club like a uh, weapon in their hand. If anybody, white, black, whatever, got up and danced, they would hit them. So Smokey stopped all that. He said, listen, we have dance music. People will get excited and they want to dance. Step back. Don't hit another one of our fans in the head with those bats. And I guess he shamed them to a degree because they did actually step back. And when the finale was over, people had gotten out of their seats, came across, came across that barrier, and were dancing and having a good time together, and most of them really had forgotten where they were seated. Wow. We saw that happen. So we, Motown music was a mo movement. Barry put on the uh, inscription on the 45s that we were the sound of young America. And the music has a magic. I feel as young as I did when I sang Heat Wave, Jimmy Mack, Nowhere to Run, Dancing in the Street, as, and the music celebrating 50 years. So yes, it is a movement and the sound of young America keeping all of us young. Right, right. Um, even Rita Pearl started a successful pop star career in the 60s, uh, a special time in history. Um, you've both been young, female, and black. Uh, and how far did you struggle with it? Do you have another? I have um, been blessed by having parents who never taught me hatred or prejudice, and I've never been in any way biased. We all, uh, being Christian and from the church, knew to love one another, be of a servitude um, nature. I've always wanted to make people happy. I've always wanted to please people with the talent that God gave. So I've never had a struggle. Uh, we, we grew up together at Motown. Uh, we were all tutored together in classes. We represented each other on a Motown Review before we actually went on our own to perform in the, with other acts. But you could bet with our training, if a Motown artist was on the show, the Motown artist stole the show. I'm speaking of Temptations and Contours and the group of Spinners were the first male group. Um, Marv Johnson was the first uh, uh, solo performer to actually make the Dick Clark show, American Bandstand. I mean, we led the way for a lot of uh, uh, generations, for a lot of uh, decades uh, with our music. So I've never had a struggle. Well, I've had uh, problems maybe socially keeping up, but this is a rigorous build business and you're always on call. So. You can never forget that, that you always should be ready or prepared for any instance to be called to perform. 